Good morning, biology students. It's day three of our distance learning. Uh, I'm trying to get these videos out in the morning now that we're home. Uh, it's 9.30 right now. Again, I'll try and have them out as soon as I can in the morning. Um, first thing, I have to take these guys, my daughter and my two sons, get them breakfast and also get them quiet enough to where um, I can actually make the video. So anyway, I'll try and get them out in the morning. 9.30 is a little later than I would like, but I'll do my best with those. It is day three. <clears throat> what are the things that we need to be working on today? Let's go to our rubric here. So we spent some time, hopefully yesterday, doing our complete classification. Uh, I saw a lot of you had this in. It was kind of fun looking through your presentations yesterday. Um, I'd say there's a good chunk of you that have started and are right where you need to be. And there's some of you that either have not started or don't have it exactly the way you need to have it. So far, we should have our cover page. I'm hoping that you're working on general characteristics. You know, just kind of general information about your organism and then also uh, our classification of our organism. So those three things is kind of where we should have been at by the end of yesterday. Um, today, what I want you working on, I really want you working on your phylogenetic tree. OK, think of these as sort of a tree of life, how something has evolved, who it's related to, those kinds of things. OK, um, if we're to kind of look and I want to show you quick. I'm posting these videos every day here on the main sort of interface, the, the home page of your class, if you will. You can see day one just kind of helps you get a gauge of how to set up your Google slideshow and what you're doing there. Day two is about classification. I also attach notes on there as well. So these are my PowerPoint notes. They'll look something like this. These are my notes on taxonomy. And so if you want to go through those and kind of look at uh, what, what notes I would have given you in class as I would have talked about some of these things, you can flip through those. It does tell you what taxonomy is, uh, binomial nomenclature, which is our naming system, kind of talks about Carl Linnaeus, who was the first guy to kind of uh, create a naming system, so on and so forth. Eventually, it talks about uh, the different classifications, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. So look through those. That might be helpful to you. And eventually we get to um, these, uh, these trees that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Here, so the phylogenetic tree, if you look at just a general one, um, there's a couple things that I think are worth mentioning. Um, branches closest together are most related. And anytime you branch off, it means you've separated yourself from other organisms. So if we look at you know, some ancestral organism, you have bacteria branching off and then archaea branching off, and then you get eukaryotes branching off. Eventually you have old plants, things like that, that you know about. And eventually at some point animals branch off and then animals separate themselves into invertebrates, things without a backbone, and then vertebrates, things with a backbone. <clears throat> and so these are our, our two main branches of animals, all the invertebrates, things like crabs, lobsters, jellyfish, insects, those kinds of things. And then things with a vertebrae, things like fish, reptiles, birds, mammals. And if just generally looking at these, what can you say? Well, you can say that fish are more related to reptiles than fish are to birds, right? Branches closest together, just like your family tree, branches closest together means more related, okay? Well, that's kind of the main theme of these phylogenetic trees, all right? If we were to look at one of these, <clears throat> we'd see something like this. So how do they make a phylogenetic tree? One of the things they look at, what are the general characteristics, right? They can look at fossil records and see how things have kind of come to be. But they also look at DNA. So this kind of gives you a little snippet of how they would use DNA to figure out who's related to who. They are looking at this joint right here in these different mammals. Uh, it's, a, it's a special ankle bone that they have. And uh, they can kind of look at the, the genes that code for that ankle bone here, okay? And so just by looking at one of these phylogenetic trees, and this is what I want you doing, is getting a phylogenetic You don't have to make one on your own, but you do need to find one on the internet that's suitable and makes sense for your organism. So how would you interpret one of these phylogenetic trees? Well, you would say that uh, deer are more related to cows than deer are to like a pig or a camel based on how close their branches are. So you have some ancestral organism 
you have camels diverging and they kind of create their own grouping. And then you have uh, the other grouping, which kind of separates eventually into all these, right? So you have pigs and peccaries related. Peccaries are kind of a desert southwest, desert southwest um, a sort of pig that lived down there, kind of a wild boar that live in like the, the deserts and the dry climates. <clears throat> and then you've got things like hippos and whales. And so they they kind of show this hippo and whale relationship here, which you're like, what? That doesn't make any sense. We had watched a video on that uh, and at least got through part of it on uh, why scientists think those might be related to each other. And so, again, branches closest together means more related. So deer are more related to cows than they are to pigs, but deer are also somewhat related to things like hippos. Notice they have this sort of splitting event here, right? But up until then, they were closely related to each other or you know, similarly related to each other, okay? That's how you interpret one of those. If we were to look at the full phylogenetic tree of life, it looks something like this. It kind of starts off here and then branches its way around and you can look at this. You can go find this online if you'd like to. I don't know who put this together, but it's really, really well done. Uh, they, you know, There's some, if you're interested in learning more about it, it's there. But you kind of look at who's related to who in the tree of life, okay? Then you get into things like cladograms. Cladograms not only show who's related to who, but what are the sort of events that lead to those relationships, okay? And so um, you have this event where everything, and oh, this is going to mess up here, you can see jaws here. Everything after this event is going to retain that. So all of these individuals have a jaw. Chimps, mice, pigeons, lizards, salamanders, and perch. Anything before this evolutionary milestone doesn't. So like hagfish, those things don't have a jaw. And so they use some of that to, to help piece those together. Just characteristics, but also things like um, uh, DNA and whatnot to kind of look at those relationships. Um, if you want to go find a video, there's all kinds of videos on this out there. I don't have one that I love more than others. You know, I looked at Khan Academy. They have one that I liked. It's 10 minutes long. Um, uh, a, a teacher from uh, Montana has one that I like on cladograms. So everybody gonna ha is going to have a different flavor of what they like. But um, look up things like phylogenetic trees and cladograms. Those are really the the trees that I want you looking at. And then you want to try and get that into your own organism. Do a Google search for that and you can find those things out. <clears throat> this is one that I had saw. You know, I was looking at a hippo phylogenetic tree and there's all kinds of stuff. In my opinion, words aren't as meaningful as pictures. Remember who your audience is. You want to find something with um, pictures on there. I think it's easier to make sense of pictures when you're trying to help People understand who's related to who and how close they're related, as opposed to something like this, which is, you know, more than we're going to need. OK, um, it doesn't have to necessarily if we go back to our rubric, doesn't necessarily have to have your species on there. Sometimes that's tough to get, you know, the Asian elephant all by itself, but they might have elephants in their relationship to other um, you know, large mammals or something like that. So this is what we're working on, our phylogenetic tree. OK, make sure you read sort of the criteria there. And if you want to work ahead, obviously you can. If you want to look at adaptations or start building your food web or look at habitat, uh, feel free to do those things. You can start on any of the stuff that you feel fit. You might just have to go back through and tweak some things as you learn as we kind of make these videos. But feel free to do that, okay? Uh, if you have questions, get a hold of me. Otherwise, um, good luck today, guys, and, and we'll keep pushing forward.